Hey guys, it's me, LD. Today is April 1st. I'm coming to you with another Pro Dota 1 commentary. Once again, from the March GEST International Dota Cup. So if you're not sick of this tournament yet, well, good. And if you are, then <laughs> I got a few more coming your way, but I should be moving on to another event shortly. Uh, this tournament did put, take place in 6.73. A little sneak peek for you guys uh, who are faithfully tuning in is I will have a couple of casts of 6.74 matches coming this week, and they will feature some of the new heroes, so I'm really excited about that. I actually am having a hard time not casting those games right now, but I know once I cast them, I'm not going to be able to go back to these boring old 6.73 replays. Yeah, it's been so long since uh, that patch came out, like, all, all of a month. <laughs> anyway... On to this match. This match is between iZone and Pacific Esports, who is also known as Revitalized. Uh, once again, it was for the March GEST International Dota Cup. Both teams are from the Philippines, and this is not the only time you'll see them match up this week. I'm actually going to be casting another game between those two for a different tournament. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and hopefully both matches prove to be equally exciting. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and unpause the replay, and we'll get started here on the picks and bans. As I'm actually on five times speed, I think I'm just going to let it run quickly until I see at least the first pick. Uh, or the first ban, rather, as I'm not familiar with either. It's, I mean, I've cast Pacific Esports before, but I'm not especially familiar with uh, either of their playing styles. Interesting, Naga Siren is the first ban. We've seen Maneski be very successful with that hero. And I wonder what they're thinking with that ban. Um, and Tiny is the reply. So one main one major reason to, to ban the Naga Siren is if you want to pick up a BKB carry. And the reason is that her net goes through BKB. And of course her Son of the Siren, as I've mentioned before, I'm going to slow it down here now. Uh, actually, I'm going to pause just for a second. Uh, the Son of the Siren will actually disable all the heroes who aren't in BKB, uh, allowing you to isolate the carry that is. So from that perspective, it's a pretty good choice. Of course, there are other heroes that can deal with BKB carries, such as Beastmaster. Uh, such as Bane, not that Bane is really <laughs> uh, a top-tier competitive pick. Uh, but there are definitely, you know, Enigma Black Hole as well, so there are definitely some ways to deal with it. Uh, Void Chronosphere would be another example, and I'm sure there's more. I'm not going to bother to list them all. Uh, but Naga Siren, one of the more popular picks, uh, a very good Radiance carrier and a, a decent contributor in the early game, as her Riptide is quite effective for the nuke damage and minus armor. So anyway, not too surprised to see that ban, and I think it is pretty telling. Uh, either it's a respect ban towards Izone, or more likely, in my opinion, they want to pick up a BKB carry. Anyway, in terms of the rest of the bans, uh, we see a tiny, a Dragonite, Obsidian. Uh, a lot of sort of... Mm, uh, just kind of random bans, honestly. I was trying to see if there's a real pattern. I mean, decent disables, but uh, Dragonite, of course, is buffed in this version, so he has the range stun uh, when he's in dragon form. Uh, so I guess that's, I think it's just banning heroes they dislike, or they don't want to see fall into the enemy's hands. Anyway, Lycan is still available, Syllabar is still available, uh, of course, Furion is still available, but Queen of Pain is going to be the choice, and it doesn't surprise me at all, these Southeast Asian teams love Queen of Pain. And frankly, I don't know why she isn't banned more, uh, if only because you know they want to play her, even if there are arguably better heroes in the pool. Urshaker is going to be the reply, another very popular hero in the scene, uh, and it does deny Pacific Esports that 1-2 combo of the Urshaker and Queen of Pain, which in the last game that I cast proved to be quite effective. That game was between, I believe it was Neolution and Pacific Esports, so in any case, that Urshaker is going to be picked up by Izone. They're going to follow it up with a Slardar. The immediate, uh, or Windrunner was the second pick for Pacific Esports, so Izone is getting a lot of disables, but the problem is that both of these heroes need a lot of farm. I shouldn't call it a problem, but it's something to keep in mind. Urshaker is a very farm-dependent support. Uh, he can certainly be effective without too much farm, especially in the early game, but in order for him to really contribute in team fights, uh, in ganks, uh, and in sort of prolonged engagements, or engagements featuring more heroes, he really needs the blink to position himself properly. Or an ally needs to pick up a four staff. So the third pick from Izone is going to be a puck, and I really like this pick. Uh, I believe this is, the, yeah, this this version does not feature the buffs to Puck's phase shift, so he won't have the zero mana cost phase shift, but he can put on an auto cast. I still think it's over, which doesn't really matter too much, because pros don't normally use that, especially not in Dota 1. Um, I don't think that's, I think it's a good pick, because it's the silence is really nice against Queen of Pain. It gives you really good synergy uh, with the Slardar as well as the Arshager. Uh, so the, these, this draft is going really quickly. So the last game I cast, I put it on 8x speed. I'm going to pause real quick. 
Uh, actually, it was still too fast at some, or too slow at some point. So anyway, uh, Pacific Esports is going to pick up a Cast Knight as their third pick. Uh, so giving them another great chaser. They have now three fantastic chasing heroes. Cast Knight, of course, having one of the highest base movement speeds in the game, as well as uh, his Chaos Bolt and Reality Rift making him a fantastic chaser. Uh, Windrunner having Windrun and Shackle Shot. Queen of Pain having Blink and Shadow Strike. A lot of chasing power. Uh, but definitely less team fight for Pacific Esports, so they're most likely going to be focusing on those early game ganks. Uh, Ogre, Magi, and Sand King were the bans for iZone. Uh, not sure how I feel about these. Yeah, I think they're decent bans, especially the Sand King. Um, although I, I kind of feel like iZone might have wanted to pick. Uh, never mind, I guess they couldn't really support him. There'd be too many melee heroes who need farm. Uh, so, you know, pretty decent bands coming out from them. Crobulus and Invoker are the other two bands for Pacific Esports. Crobulus would actually fit in decently well, and it gives you double silence versus a puck. Which is always a pain, or, or with the puck versus a Queen of Pain. Uh, which, which is always a pain, yeah, get it. Um, so I think that's a decent band there. And of course Invoker, there's just so many heroes that are popular nowadays. It's it's almost like there aren't enough bands. But I love I loved how these Southeast Asian teams... Uh, value different heroes, so you you know you see you see non-traditional or bands that are traditional in the European scene just either being made late or not at all, and sometimes those heroes do slip into the pool. So in terms of both teams' lineups, nobody really has dedicated supports. I mean, Urshaker is a support-ish hero, but he needs some farm. He's normally not the number one support. So I'd expect to see Crystal Maiden, Vengeful Spirit, something like that for both teams. Pacific Esports looks like they're probably going to be running the Windrunner as a solo along with the Queen of Pain. Uh, neither team are picking a jungle yet. I wonder if we're going to see any jungle action. Uh, I just I don't think I've seen any junglers in these Southeast Asian games outside of the one Lycan game that I cast. Beastmaster is going to be the pick. Uh, yeah, I guess it's not a bad pickup. Slardar likes to go for a BKB. Beastmaster, of course, a decent solo hero. This does mean that we'll probably see a Windrunner in a support role. Maybe we'll see a Jungle Beastmaster. I'm not really sure, but they're start they're getting to the point where they, I mean they they need a hard support now, there's no question about it. And Windrunner, while she can play support, I think it's really a waste of her you her excuse me, potential. Um, as you know, getting the quick levels on Shackle Shot. Uh, really Windrunner doesn't reach her peak until level twelve or so. Uh, and you really you want to have some items up like phase boots, mechanism, force staff, uh, you know, or hell, even get some damage items. But you really want her. She de definitely benefits from farm, especially in the mid game, uh, in order to reach her full potential. So Pacific Esports having four farm dependent heroes and a, even a farm dependent support in the Windrunner, uh, gonna have to pick up something like a Crystal Maiden, some hero that just doesn't need any farm. I think CM would be a good choice here. It's gonna be a silencer though, so I'm. I guess it's going to be a support silencer. Uh, silencer, of course, will be a great counter to some of Izone's heroes, uh, as they are very reliant on comboing their spells. Earthshaker wants to be able to blink in, drop his ultimate, uh, and drop a, an enchant totem as well as a fissure. And it's Echo Slam, by the way. I actually got it right this time. I, I could remember it. For some reason, I just always forget the name of that spell. At least when I'm commentating. Uh, Slardar, not as reliant. He just really wants to drop the stun. But, you know, being able to sprint, being able to amplify damage. Uh, but really, it's also the Puck. The Puck wants to be able to chain all three of his spells together. And then possibly phase shift in order to blink out to safety. Uh, or, 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 or about to safety. So, Silence are going to be a decent... Uh, not decent. Uh, uh, excellent counter to these heroes. If he's able to get level 6 and not die too much. I'm interested to see how they play him. I'm guessing, like I said, he's going to have to be a support along with the Windrunner. I mean, I guess Beastmaster could support, maybe, but really not the ideal way to play it. I just don't... Pacific Esports is going to have weird lanes, is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, and I think Izone has the definite advantage there. Panda is still in the pool. I wonder if they'll look towards a Panda for their final pick. Uh, but not only is the Silencer pick great just to counter these heroes that want to combo spells, it's also great against heroes that are very reliant on their ultimates. Wow, wait, hold on, I gotta pause and talk about that pick. I did not expect that. Um, oh, as for Silencer, just to finish my point, he's very great against heroes that are reliant on big ultimates. Uh, because those hero heroes that have big ultimates, uh, with long cooldowns that do a lot of damage, a lot of CC, etc., 
If his ultimate is dropped at the right time, it completely disrupts the enemy's ability to chain stun. Uh, you might be able to pick off Ancient Apparition before he drops his ult, or the Puck, or the Earthshaker. Um, so, a great counter in that regard. Interesting, after seeing the Silencer pick, Aizen goes into a Magnetar. Now, I have not seen this hero played at all in competitive Dota 1. I'm very excited to see how he turns out. I can't remember if he got buffed in 6.73. There were a lot of heroes that got some changes. Um, but he just hasn't been picked much. He, ever since he... Well... Actually, I can't remember ever watching him pe played competitively. I think he used to be a little more popular. Um, like, way back in the day when it was a more for farming-oriented game. Uh, as sort of a, a carry and an initiator. Of course, that gives them a, an amazing wombo combo. I mean, all five of these heroes are great team fighters. Uh, if they're able to set it up, it'll be absolutely devastating. But it's going to be hard against Silencer, so we'll have to see. Uh, again, I, I, I'm interested to see how he's played. I'm guessing he's going to be their carry, and Earthshaker and A are going to be the supports. I'm, I'm curious to see how he itemizes. Is he going to go for more of like a ganking style, like some utility items? Is he going to go for raw damage? Obviously, you expect to see a Blink Dagger. Izone uh, might go for a quad Blink drag Dagger strat. I saw it in my previous cast. It didn't work out too well. Um, so there are definitely some drawbacks to that quad blink dagger, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the players here. For, so for Pacific Esports, I'm going to have Lowie handling that Windrunner. Exile going to be on the Beastmaster. Iwi on the Chaos Knight. Santino, who, for anyone who doesn't know, is probably the youngest pro in the world. I think he's, someone said 14 or 12 in the comments. Anyway, I know there's an interview on Join Dota, so definitely check that out. If, or it was linked on Join Dota, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. I believe the interview was done by Ghosty Gamers, something like that. So, M's going to be playing the Silencer. As we see, a bunch of Sentinel heroes headed towards the bottom lane. Uh, Kel's going to be on this Earthshaker. We're going to see Froggy on the Ancient Apparition. Uh, Joven going to be on the Slardar. And who do we got here? Jorero. Jo sorry, Jojero going to be handling the Magnetar going mid. And Polane on the Puck going to be soloing top. And I just had to adjust my audio as I was terrified that I had accidentally muted my microphone. But uh, apparently my sound is working, so I'm crossing my fingers that it is, because I'd hate to have to redo the whole uh, drafting stage. What did he just kill there? Slaughter killing one of his own? What? It's... A player's forces are under I'm attack. confused. Well, anyway, Windrunner are going to be dropping a ward. I believe this ward does block the camp. It also gives you some decent vision. Personally, I'm partial to the ward that is, you can place like right here, uh, as it will actually reveal part of the lane and also block the camp. Uh, that is, if you're not going to place a magic bush ward. In any case, we'll have to see how the warding goes. It looks like, for now, that camp should be blocked off. So very defensive wards being placed by Pacific Esports. Uh, Windrunner definitely going to be in the support role, uh, as she did purchase the wards there. Santita going to be soloing the long lane. Up against the infamous uh, combination of Earthshaker and Ancient Apparition. Uh, this is a devastating combo. Of course, Fissure plus Cold Feet is a guaranteed 3-4 to four second stun if you chain it properly. And then you have Slardar as well. But if Queen of Pain is able to blink out, she should be okay. And in terms of the middle lane, we're going to see Beastmaster up against Magnetar. I actually... I want to say this is a very even matchup. Both heroes have a great ability to push the lane. Magnetar with the Shockwave, Beastmaster with the... Wild Axes as well as Inner Beast. I'm interested to see if he goes for uh, some points in Call of the Wild. Uh, and it looks like he is, so he's not, at least for now, not going to get any points in the R. I actually think you need to, just to guarantee room control. But we'll see. Magnetar not the most mobile here. Did up for Quelling Blade, so very farming oriented build. In the top lane, looks like we're going to see just an empty top lane. We're going to see Puck just relegated to the jungle. Uh, maybe looking to do some a player's pulling. Are under attack. Um, so it's not often you see a hero abandon a lane entirely this early. And Puck is not a very effective jungler. Although if he gets this pull off, he might might be able to get some farm. Now, only going to be able to get the range creep. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if you can pull the melee creeps. But even if you can, it's obviously a very oh, tight timing siege. window. Uh, so Puck really not going to be able to do anything. I mean, I think he should at least sit top. He's missing... He could be getting these creeps safely, so... Uh, a little bit early to be abandoning the lane, but... Uh, meanwhile, Santino hitting level 2. Puck still doesn't have a creep of experience, so... This could be a big problem, actually. Puck needs those early levels to be effective. 
Uh, he really wants to have a quick level 6. As we do see action on the bottom lane, Satino might be in some trouble here. Needs to pop the healing stuff, trying to find the burst. He's doing. not going to be able to. Sprint allows Slaughter to pick up the first blood. Uh, Windrunner, meanwhile, pick up an illusion rune. Thanks to that Beastmaster Hawk. Uh, so that's huge. I mean, even though Santino was getting the levels, the fact that he went down first kind of evens things out. Uh, at least a little bit. So Puck going to be fighting with Silencer. Oh, this is not good. Puck going to be in a lot of trouble. Get Silence. Uh, and that's another, you know, another reason why Silencer is so good. You just see that one level in... Uh, what is, I forget the name of his passive, but the spell that makes it... Basically, once you cast one spell, uh, his, his passive will temporarily silence you. So Puck not able to orb out as a result. Uh, really nice... I mean, really unfortunate matchup for the Puck. Yeah, if he's level 2, he might have been able to live with the phase shift there. Um, but, you know, in any case, he'll have to head back to the top lane and hope things go better next time. Queen of Pain, uh, or Santino, still trying to get some farm going on the bottom lane. Uh, Ancient Apparition is going to be here to harass him back. Actually out-leveling Santino, so we're seeing both long lane solos really getting shut down hard. Uh, I'm assuming they have no farm. Puck getting dove very aggressively. They know he's level 1. They know he can't actually... Oh, not able to escape in time. That was unfortunate. Uh, meanwhile, we see Queen of Penguin now. So both long lane solos getting completely trashed. Uh, in terms of the CS, what are we seeing? 20 on the slot. Wow. Wait a second. 20 on the slot art already. Oh, man. He's farming like a champ. Uh, 12 on the Magnetar. 15 on the Beastmaster. 19 on the Chaos Knight. So Chaos Knight basically keeping pace. So we're trading a Slardar's farm for Chaos Knights, and then middle lane Beastmaster slightly winning. Top lane is getting pushed, tower already down to half health. So overall, uh, if I were Pacific Esports, I'd be feeling pretty good. As the Puck is still level 1. He just wants to get some experience, man. Cut him a break, Windrunner. One thing about this Scourge tri-lane, which I didn't mention before, is... It's a, not only is it a you know difficult lane because of the curse of the sun. There's a tier one tower that's down only four minutes. We're not getting the last hit. Probably gonna be getting a, a quick hurry or maybe some boot. Shackle shot goes out, but it's not leveled up enough. Puck should be able to get out of here. And this tri lane is really hard for Puck because it features two 600 range supports. So their harassment pet potential is extremely strong, and of course the chasing ability, as I mentioned, is really there. But, you know, the wind run ability, the shackle shot having long range, and of course, reality rift plus chaos bolt, and chaos knight having really good base movement speed. As a courier here, might be in a little bit of trouble. Santino really wants to pick it off, probably not going to be able to though. He did pick up his bottle. Most likely going for some bottle crow action. The pressure continues in this top lane though, and Magnetar can't sit mid forever. Uh, or at the very least, they're going to have to roam someone over that way. It looks like Urshaker heading mid. Maybe going to set up a kill here first. Because this puck is so underleveled, only level 2, 5.5 minutes in, uh, he's not going to do anything to stop this push. The Reign of Basilius is going to help them push a lot. Windrunner aggressively zoning the puck out of the lane, looking for a shackle shot. Might be able to get it if he just moves a little bit down. Uh, looking for the shackle is not going to be able to latch. Puck should be able to live. Magnetar still not rotating this way though. Puck might go down. Where is the Magnetar? Uh, where is the Mag? Uh, he's just giving, leaving this Puck for dead. Uh, that's a very. I, I think he could have at least saved him there. Well, Puck able to get out, but meanwhile the pressure continues top. Santino trying his best to get some experience anywhere he can. I think his Hawk actually spotted Urshager here. He's hiding in the trees, so uh, he should be okay. And I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. I think. One mistake Izone's making is they're not applying similar pressure to this lane. I believe they were doing some stack pulling earlier, which doesn't do a whole lot to push your tower. If they just done a single pull, uh, they could have gotten it started a little bit earlier. Uh, or maybe the maybe it was just warded and the ward died. I know they had a ward. I don't know if they counter warded. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain gonna go down to a hasted Magnus. A player's forces are under attack. Or Magnetar rather. So well played by him. Will he be going on to mid? No, probably gonna back off. So, now that he's level 7, he's going to be getting a lot of farm, especially with that Quelling Blade. As we see him doing some bottle crowing too. 35 creeps on the Magnetar, 33 on the Beastmaster, 34 on the Chaos Knight, and 41 on the Slardar. So, this is, the game is all about the tanky melee carries. As we do see Chaos Knight picking up a solo kill on the Puck, I believe. 
Already with a vitality booster. Action mid. Magnetar driving uh, Beastmaster back, but the roar comes out and there's not going to be a reverse polarity, or maybe it was already used. So, in the end, another kill for Pacific Esports, and they continue to push their advantage. They're already up one tower. Puck has been shut down a little bit more than Queen of Pain. Uh, and Queen of Pain at least is able to get some levels now. Slaughter is not Slaughter not going to be able to kill her off on his own. Although it looks like Ancient Apparition wants to say something. I'm trying to get in range for the stun. Could sprint and stun, but a cold feed not going to be able to do anything. Uh, looks like Slaughter able to pick up the kill there, so nicely done by him. I actually wasn't sure if he was going to get that. But no TP support incoming. Silencer not quite level 6 yet. Once he hits level 6, uh, we may see those ganks getting turned around. Uh, as his ultimate could definitely throw off those tower dies, and then if you TP in with some allies, can be uh, can be a good turnaround. Looks like Magnetar going for the power treads, so going for a more auto attack oriented build. Uh, honestly, wouldn't be surprised to see... or would not have been surprised to see phase boots instead. Just for a little bit more chasing power. Uh, but I believe the way that Empower works is it's based off of your strength, so... Uh, well, it's based off your primary attribute, so having the plus damage from phase boots is not gonna... Uh, is not gonna be buffed further by Empower. Not sure what Musharu means, but a little bit of all check. Another four seconds on a puck. I say another, but I imagine uh, there's been more since he's already gone down to the solo cast night. Reality Rift not cast at the proper time. If you do it just right, you can actually pull the puck back. Uh, but unfortunately, the timing wasn't perfect there. Fissure comes out. Chaos Knight maybe going to be in some trouble here. Urshaker wandering in. He wants to go. They're going to lose the tier 2 here. There's no support. And there's... N uh, that was a... I have to say, that was a big blunder by the Sentinel. Uh, they pretty much just gave up the tower for free. Roar goes on the Ancient Apparition. Ancient Apparition in a bit of a pickle here. Will he be able to get out is the question. The boar's hunting him. He jukes into the fog. Magnetar, I guess his reverse polarity is on cooldown. No, it's not. He's just not using it. Finally uses that. It was not the best use, I have to say. He's going to go down to the silencer. You see that? The silencer passive co or Oh, that's what it's called. Last word. The last word coming in handy there. Is the last word? Or is that his boar? Damn it. Am I going to have to go look something up in the middle of the cast again? No, I'm not. You guys, if you don't know already, go to play Dota and look up the names yourselves. So I'll try to get them right in the future. But, but it's one of these heroes I just don't see too often in Dota 1. So anyway, Cast Knight going to be diving Earthshaker. Nice shackle shot from Windrunner. That's going to be a dead Earthshaker. Oh, it is the last word. Curse of the Silent is his... Uh, is it? His, oh, Glaives of Wisdom. Okay, yeah, it is the last word. I got it. Yeah, shut up. Stop laughing at me. H apparition finally hits level 6. He's going to be able to drop the ultimate here to delay this push if he does not in time. The Sentinel really wants to use their wombo combo here, uh, but they're just not able to right now. Because reverse polarity is on cooldown. Cold Feet ticks in on the Beastmaster. Beastmaster in a lot of trouble. Tower does not get denied, and Beastmaster lives. Uh, the Sentinel just making all sorts of mistakes here. Very sloppy play from Izone. They're really, at this point, all they have going for him is the Slardar. Uh, he's up to 50 at creeps, but he's being matched for the most part by the Chaos Knight. I'm going to take a quick sip of water here. Um, Queen of Pain dropping the ultimate. Will she be able to kill off Slardar? Nice wand usage. Slardar going to level up. Oh, what a good time to level up. He's going to be able to live. Uh, so Santino just not able to get that kill. That would have been huge. Uh, because I believe Slardar now has his Vanguard. If he elects to go that route. Yeah, he does, so... Uh, delaying that Vanguard would have been a huge boon for the Scourge. I mean, Slaughter is that much easier to kill. Even though he's a pretty naturally tanky here. Oh, he's stuck around too long. Uh, and you see the power of this long range Scourge lineup. Uh, Reality Rift and Chaos Bolt was there if they needed it, along with the Power Shot. Able to pick up Slaughter from pretty much his maximum vision range. Meanwhile, Magnetar diving extremely aggressively mid. Tower is in deny range, so Beastmaster probably going to be denying this momentarily. As we do see someone finally going down on the Scourge. Santino dies again. Where did Puck get these items from? That's something I want to know. Uh, he's up to 25 creeps. You know, Santino at 20. 0 and 6 on Santino, 0 and 3 on Puck. So I thought Santino was having the better time. Uh, but he's apparently having the worst time. Puck's going to be completely a mechanism. And only 100 gold. Wow, that's actually pretty huge for him. 
the question will be if he can live long enough to use it in these team fights. Generally, with Puck, you're an initiator. Uh, you're going to be in the thick of the fight. If your teammates, like an Ancient Apparition, are sitting a little bit farther back, uh, you're not going to be able to heal them. But aside from Ancient Apparition, pretty much everyone in the Sentinel wants to get close to. So I expect it won't be the worst worst carrier in the world. In terms of the overall map control, I'm just taking a look at the mini map right now. I'm not even bothering to move the camera. As my cat will just not leave me alone. Uh, and it looks like it's definitely favoring the Scourge on the whole. Now they're going to be applying pressure to this bottom lane now. Vanguard complete on the Chaos Knight, so he's extremely tanky. Uh, as we do see Beastmaster going down with a combination of Magnetar and Slardar in the middle lane. Surprised there weren't any TPs from the Scourge. As they do have them, but I guess felt that that Magnetar was a dead man. Or that Beastmaster was a dead man. Is Santino going to die again? Santino might go down again. He pops the bottle. He's going to need some sick jukes here. Is he going to drop the ultimate? I think he wants to win this fight. Oh, he does pick up the puck, but the fissure snipes him. Uh, even so, at least Santino got something for his trouble. Curse of the Sun and Apparition. Great power shot, cleaning him up. Meanwhile, did someone else die, Todd? Mm, I might have missed another kill if I did. Apologies for that. Slardar going on the offensive here. Nice slither and crush. Going to be cleaning up the Ancient Apparition. One more auto attack. Vaughn goes off. It's not going to be enough. Slardar drops the ultimate. Going to continue the chase. He doesn't. He has the magic wand, so he's one more stun. Are going to be able to crush the Windrunner. Windrunner should go down. Uh, but the four second Chaos Bolt. Oh, man. And the Shackle Shot latches. This could be a big turnaround if he pulls it off. And Slardar going to go down. Ancient Apparition ult going to hit. Going to hit the Windrunner. Going to clean her up. Meanwhile, action in the top lane. These guys just love to feed. Uh, as it looks like Beastmaster going to be possibly cleaning up a kill here on the Earthshaker. Uh, he should probably continue the chase. Oh, the Shockwave almost picky him off. Queen of Pain going the offensive does not have the Sonic Wave, but one more blink. And she should be able to pick up the kill. One more blink. Yeah, there we go. Scream of Pain comes out. Good to pick him up. Earthshaker runs into a lucky regenerator. Wow, this game. So because Puck went for the mechanism, that means he's not going to have a blink dagger for a long time. And as I mentioned before, Sentinel have a lot of very... Or a lot of heroes that really want to pick up Blink Taggers. Curious is... Are under attack. Where is... I want to see if Magnetar has any items, really. What color is he again? He's yellow. Oh, he's dead. Uh, okay, yeah, Blink Tagger on the Courier. So I believe that is his. It's going to give the Sentinel their first Blink Tagger. Now, in my last commentary, we saw a team go for four Blink Daggers, and actually backfired pretty badly on them. Uh, just because, you know, their heroes, some of the heroes that have Blink Daggers never got to use them. They just got jumped, and then, you know, Blink Dagger can't be used defensively to, to escape, uh, as long as the enemy's staying on you. And it doesn't do anything to help your team survive, uh, or yourself. So, I'm curious how many they're going to go for. That's the real question. Earthshaker presumably will get one. I wouldn't mind seeing maybe the Slardar or the Puck just tank up. And then you have a Magnetar and an Earthshaker with Blink Daggers. Uh, or maybe, you know, have the Earthshaker get a Force Staff or a Drum, something like that. Get a Blink Dagger on the Slardar. So we'll see how they choose to divvy up the Players items. Forces are under attack. A couple of Scourge heroes are going to be smoked up here. They might run right into Magnetar. Magnetar needs to blink away. He does blink away. Cast Knight not able to react in time. The Hawk is scouting them. They need to run. Oh, and a nice use of the. I believe it's Skewer there to, to get away. Uh, can be used defensively, so gives him a lot of mobility. I didn't think about it, but he's actually Players quite a mobile here, especially once he gets the Blink Dagger. Arshay, you're going to be doing a little farming up bottom, wants to get his Blink as soon as possible. Of course, he's still quite a ways away. The tier 1 tower is up bottom, it's the last remaining tier 1 tower on the map. And it looks like the Scourge are not going to let this go, uh, this tower go quietly. Puck going to initiate here, Santino, is he lagging? Why is he so slow to react? I think this is going to be a dead Queen of Pain, it is. Only a 2 second stun on the Slardar, Slardar very tank. Earthshaker drops a pretty big ultimate. Oh, and the Cold Feet comes out on the Windrunner. Windrunner most likely going to be going down here. Does drop a Power Shot, but almost certainly going to die. Ancient Apparition so close, oh, and uh, Magtar able to pick that kill up. Misses on the Skewer, not going to be able to clean up the, uh, 
all sorts of stuff going on. I can't even remember some of the hero or ability names here. Slardar's still in the thick of things. Not sure why he's focusing the Chaos Knight, though. That hero is so hard to take down. Uh, between the move speed as well as the just the overall tankiness. And the Beastmaster has finally picked up the Necronomicon. I say finally, it's actually pretty quick. Uh, and that's going to allow him to prevent the Slardar from doing any more damage. Uh, he's going to be able to get away, though, thanks to Sprint. Yeah, so level 2 Necronomicon, that's actually a very good farm. Uh, 62 creeps, as well as 3, 1, and 2, but I think the main thing is, you know, all the tower kills. Already got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 towers. And with this, with the map control, this tower advantage gives the Scourge, and, you know, considering the fact that they are the Scourge, so they already have the natural Roshan advantage. Pacific Esports really should be looking to Roshan. I think now would be the perfect time. Izone does have a very ultimate heavy lineup, but you always have Silencer. If Izone tries to jump in, just keep him away from the fight. Have him drop the Global Silence, uh, which is on cooldown for 100 seconds, but once it's back, yeah, they could definitely look to go for it. AA going to be doing his best to keep the Creep Equilibrium on the Sentinel's, uh, in the Sentinel's favor by constantly spamming that ult on waves. Of course, that does mean he might not have his ult when they need it in a team fight, but it's the price you pay for losing all these early towers. Bunch of Scourge here is smoked up. Looks like Urshager going to be the first to drop here. Now Slardar jumps in. Nice two-man Slytherin crush. Urshager most likely going down. Santino should be able to clean him up. Let's look at the rest of the fight. Puck getting one hero with the Dream Pearl. Not the best Dream Pearl. Magnetar with a huge reverse polarity. Slardar with the Slytherin crush to follow. This is a lot of Chainsaw. Beastmaster Roar coming out. This might be a turnaround. Mechanism dropped by the Puck. Puck Illusory Orb goes in. Slardar now either chasing or running away. I'm not sure. Is he trying to kill the Queen of Pain or is he just trying to get out of here? I think a little bit of both. Whiffs on the Slither Crush. Nice blink. Kind of a bait by Santino. Really well played. The chase continues, but you can't catch this Chaos Knight. Four second Chaos Bolt. I think that Slaughter might be dead. Beastmaster in a little bit of trouble. Ancient Apparition in a little bit of trouble. Beastmaster still running for his life. Very afraid of this Urshaker blinking. Uh, and it looks like actually Slaughter picked off the Queen of Pain and still alive. Oh, a nice skewer driving the Beastmaster back towards his puck. As well as Ancient Apparition. Ancient Apparition stopping for a little bit of farming. Beastmaster should be going down, tries to bottle up, the Shockwave cleans it up. Really well played. Uh, and Silencer is finally back in the fray, but yeah, this is one of the downsides to that here. His ultimate's still in cooldown. Even if he had been alive, he couldn't have done too much. Power Shot gonna miss. Uh, Curse of the Sun comes out. Slardar gonna be forced to use a Slither and Crush to stop losing health. Uh, but I believe there's an urn on the center. Yeah, Ancient Apparition should be able to earn up with Slardar. Mechanism gets popped, urn should be shortly to follow, and he's gonna be quite healthy in terms of his health. It's healthy in terms of his health. Uh, he's gonna have more HP. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Chaos Knight initiating on the puck. I don't like this choice. He actually has a Reaver. Holy crap, that's a lot of farm. Uh, is Chaos Knight going for what looks like a quick heart, maybe a Satanic? I, I wouldn't have mind. I mean, you know, it's a nice item on him, but I kind of feel like maybe something like a BKB would have been better. I believe Reverse Polarity stuns through the BKB, but that's really it for the Sentinel in terms of BKB counters. Or if you're not going to go BKB, maybe get like a Manta or a Diffusal Blade. Manta does remove Cold Feet. Uh, it's also It also removes the Slardar ultimate. It gives you a little more move speed. Uh, Diffusal Blade, great versus these mana-hungry heroes, especially when you couple it with an Economicon. Puck is going to go down. Completely out of position there. Uh, this fight's sort of all over the place. Ancient Apparition and Slardar both on the retreat. And it looks like Urshag are going to be in some trouble here too. Chaos Knight, what are you doing? I think he just blinked to his own illusion by accident. Slardar's still running, but with completely out of mana, and the Sonic Wave comes out, Slardar are going to drop. A ultimate hits two. Silencer are most likely going to die here. Almost, he's, He should die, right? He's got to go down to 77. A player's forces are Point seven. Uh, oh, just going to live. Very fortunate. That cloak definitely saved him. Meanwhile, Urshager's still alive somehow, but he is finally going to go down. So it's starting to look like the Pacific Esports is a, a tight grip on this one. Uh, and now that a bunch of heroes are dead, I'm going to do a quick farm and item progression check. So, Urshager actually leading the game in terms of denies. Second only to Chaos Knight, but otherwise not farming well at all. Nowhere near that Blink Dagger. Uh, as we might see some action brink breaking out. <laughs> breaking out here. Oh, a three-man reverse polarity. Puck to combo. It's going to be a triple kill for the Sentinel. Game going back the other way, just when you thought it was under control. Uh, in comes that devastating reverse polarity. 
Uh, it's certainly up there with, you know, spells like Ravage and Epicenter, just, you know, the ultimate wombo combo, game-changing ultimates. Put Reverse Polarity on that list. It looks like the Magatar is going to be going for a Battle Fury. This is a very pub-style build, if that's how he's going to go. Finally sold his Quilling Blade to make room for TPs. Anyway, item progression, item progression, item progression. Uh, really nothing else. I, Puck going to have the Blink Dagger now, so that's going to be huge. Blink Dagger on Slardar. Mechanism still working on it on Lowey, so yeah, lagging pretty far behind. Uh, maybe change your name to reflect your slow farming status. <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. Uh, Santino with the point booster, probably going for negatives. Might need to go for a BKB, honestly. It's, and, you know, put the agonims on hold. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what Chaos Knight does. Maybe going for Satanic, maybe a heart. I mean, Reaver is a big purchase. I, I, I'm not sure it was the correct one, but at this point, you, there's no looking back for him. So, the one nice thing is he has 3 0 and 11 with uh, about a billion health. I think it's over 2,000 already, which 23 minutes in the game is fantastic. A uh, yeah, 2,100 health and 10 armor. This guy is an absolute machine. The nice thing about getting a heart is it does make your your illusions from your ultimate ridiculously tank, and they also do a lot of damage from the bonus 40 strength uh, from getting the heart of Taras. Another sort of unheralded, or you know, one of the things to keep in mind about Magnetar as a hero, and one of the unheralded benefits to him, is that Empower is a really strong buff on. Him. On your allied heroes. So if you have any kind of carry, and power makes them a lot stronger. Similar to Ogre Magi, except Magnetar, obviously a stronger solo hero, less of a support, more of an initiator and team fighter. I'm wonder. I guess he's. And the nice thing about power also is that it's spammable enough that you can have it up on several allied heroes. Magnetar with a DD rune, gonna be looking for an absolutely Players ridiculous. Uh, amount of damage. If he pops the DD rune and he's in power, and he's going to be hitting really hard. Probably for like 400, 500 damage a hit. Slardar going to be blinking out. Kind of a, a midget blink there, but it's enough, I suppose. Sorry if I offended any of my midget fans out there. Um, but yeah, that was an underwhelming blink. That's like a 10-inch 10, 10 vertical in the NBA or something. Magtar pops the DD, going to be empowering himself. Actually not doing as much damage as I thought. Uh, only around... 330, and then part of that is because he doesn't actually, Empower doesn't affect the Battle Fury damage. Uh, it's only based off of your stats. Slardar gonna be sprinting his way out. Meanwhile, it looks like Earthshaker goes down to start the fight. That is not a good start for the Sentinel. Fight is happening all over the place. Empower gonna, or DD Magnetar gonna be able to take out one hero. Misses on the Skewer yet again. So not the first time we've seen it, but that's gonna be enough to clean up the Windrunner. Who's gonna win in this upcoming battle? I think Magnetar is absolutely boned here. Yes, Queen of Pain drops the ultimate, Slardar drops his stun. Uh, and while the Magnetar hits hard, he's just not hitting hard enough to deal with the Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight doing so much work. Three seconds stun. God, Chaos Ball is in the Slardar picks off... Wait, that was that Slardar? No, that was Puck! Puck actually picked up some more kills. I'm going to be looking to TP out. Uh, is he going to have the blink on cooldown is the question? He is not. That is a dead Puck. The mana Burn comes out. He's completely out of mana. He's not going to have... He might be able to phase shift. It's not going to matter. Santino cleans that up. Santino now sitting on 2,000 gold. Could complete his agonims if he wants to. Or maybe he'll go towards a BKB. Chaos Knight probably going to be having his heart of Taras soon. Courier here almost went down. So Courier, uh, you know, proving to be a bit of a liability, but in the end does not feed. Always a nice thing to happen. Uh, you know, if you're going to do bottle crowing, a cool feature, or a cool option is to scout the runes with your courier, which we can see Pacific Esports is doing here. Especially good if you're low, uh, in terms of in terms of health. That way you don't risk yourself. At worst, you feed the courier, uh, which is actually a pretty big deal. But after winning a big team fight like that, enemy's likely not going to be scouting runes uh, as they're all respawning. Urshaker's still trying to farm this blink. Wait, wait a second. Ancient... <laughs> I go to check item progression. Ancient Aberge just picked up a Hand of Midas. This must be a troll build. Uh, and a lot of pub items coming out of Ryzone. Battle Fury and the Magnetar. Uh, Hand of Midas on the Ancient Apparition. In terms of Magnetar items, instead of the... So, yeah, I don't know what this is all about. It's such a late Hand of Midas, too. 
it's one thing to build it really early if you're owning on a support like the Dendi did on Earthshaker. You got a really fast Candomitis in Dota 2, but when your team's having this much trouble, it just seems very strange to me. Aghanims is complete on the Queen of Pain. Uh, the Necronomicon 3 is up on Beastmaster. Fight is Puck is in a bad spot here. I don't know if the enemy spotted him, though. H Apparition with the Hand of Midas, maybe looking to 1v1 Chaos Knight, not gonna be able to do it. Windrunner steals that one with a power shot. Cold Feet does tick, but with the heart complete, he's got 3,000 health, really does not give a rat's behind about anyone on the enemy team. This guy is an absolute baller. Uh, honestly, at this point, I would love to see Chaos Knight pick up an armlet. A player's because when you have a heart of Tarask, you actually don't lose. Excuse me, you don't lose any health. When the armlet's active. I mean, you have the degen, but it's more than compensated for by your natural regen, as long as you're not being attacked. So anyway, Chaos Knight picking up more kills. This game is looking very bleak for the Sentinels. Slaughter still is not a BKB. Mask of Madness on the Magnetar. Hits a couple of heroes, actually going to work with that Mask of Madness. One kill comes out. Gonna be looking for two. Is he gonna get it? Ancient Apparitional might clean up Beastmaster. Yeah, Beastmaster gonna drop. Slaughter gets pulled back in by the Reality Rift. Urshaker comes back, drops the ultimate. Slaughter gonna be going down. God, this Chaos Knight is so tanky. Slaughter, or Urshaker hitting a Fissure, but that's not gonna be enough. Pandemitis AA comes in, doing a little troll feed here. Completely throwing this game, first team. Monster kill. <laughs> you know, with the ultimate down, I'm not sure what he had in mind. Yeah, but anyway, I think Armlet would be get great on Chaos Knight. Uh, because also, it gives you a ton of bonus strength. Uh, which, which synergizes really well with his ultimate. You can pop the armlet, your illusions will hit much harder and have a lot more health. And then if you want, you can turn the armlet off. Uh, if you don't want to deal with the degen. Although at this point, the heart more than makes up for it. So, I think that'd be a fantastic pickup. I don't know what this TP is. That's just a feeding TP. Chaos Bolt comes in. Queen of Pain about to drop the Sonic Wave, but the silence comes out. This might be a save here from Urshager. Meanwhile, Windrunner headed to the bottom lane, gonna be doing some farming. Chaos Knight continuing to be absolutely baller. Hits the Chaos Bolt, hits the Reality Rift. I say hits like you can't miss it, but nonetheless, uh, he does manage to land it. Doesn't miss click on a creep, so big plays from him. And Roshan's still chilling, so I wonder if the Scourge is going to take it at any point. I feel like they've had control for uh, enough map control to do it for a long time. They did finally pick off the final Sentinel Outer Tower, so, you know, tightening their grip just a little bit more. In terms of creeps, nobody farming particularly well. Actually, Sentinel out farming the Scourge. But when the, when the enemy cast knight is 8 0 and 16, that's really not going to matter. He goes back for a drum. Uh, I mean, drum's a great item. I'm not going to say it's a bad pickup. It's just kind of weird to go back for such a small purchase after getting, you know, a Heart of Tarrasque, which is very difficult to farm and quite expensive. Uh, but of course the stats on drum are fantastic. It synergizes well with your illusions, uh, as you can toggle, you can pop the drum charge to make your illusions hit that much harder. Reality Rift, uh, Queen of Pain, Sonic Wave, going to be cleaning up the puck there, and now the Sentinel going to be on the retreat. Shadow Strike, Reality Rift, once again, so good at chasing. Magnetar drops the... Oh, the reverse polarity. It's not going to be quite enough, though. Is it going to be enough? It looks like Beastmaster going to be in danger of going down here. Magnetar now the one who's on the retreat. But you cannot run away from the Scourge lineup. And in fact, he is going to go down. Queen of Pain cleans up another kill. Or actually, that was Windrunner. Uh, and that's probably going to be Rax. I don't see how the Sentinel can defend this. A little bit of friendly all chat. I think it's friendly. Something about picnics. This game is making me quite hungry. He's messed her whipping on the axis there. Not like it matters. The other nice thing about the drum, uh, as well as the Necronomicon, is they, all, they also have a Beastmaster, so they now have triple attack speed auras. Which, as you can see, makes the racks just absolutely melt. There should be double racks, if not mega creeps. In fact, just because of how hard these Chaos Knight Illusions hit, not only do they hit hard, but they're also super tanky. You can see the racks melting here. Of course, they do take a lot of bone damage to nukes, but still, uh, it's quite hard to bring down. Pu everything being dropped just to try and delay this push. Puck should be able to get out of here. Urshaker with a nice blink ultimate. Uh, might be able to pick off Beastmaster. Is going to be able to. Chaos Knight's still tanking. I think he might go down, though. Cold Feet plus Fissure. Enchant Totem comes out. Cold Feet comes out again. Yeah, we're going to see Chaos Knight drop. 
But the rest of the Scourge should be able to escape. Oh my god. Ugh, man. 32 minutes in, we see 34 kills for the Scourge, averaging over a kill per minute. And the Sentinel clock it in not too badly at only 27 kills per minute. And so definitely this game making me appreciate what Toby Wan does. Whether you whether you pre you know whether you like his style or not, you gotta admit that man is absolute pipes of steel. Uh, as I'm finding myself not out of breath per se, but my voice definitely is not as experienced at these intense Southeast Asian games. Quite a pain with the agony. I'm just gonna be farming up some waves. Um, uh, with the ultimate, it's a nice thing you can do when you get Aghanims on, on Queen of Pain. Oh, huh. It says Aghanim Scepter Quap. I thought it was going to actually give the description of Warcraft 3, which I didn't think it did. But, uh, I was sorely disappointed. Are under attack. But yeah, because the ultimate is a 40 second cooldown, you can use that to farm quite well. Urshiger with the Blink Dagger now, but it just feels like too little too late. At this point, uh, the Scourge don't have a pipe, although it looks like, yeah, Silencer should be picking it up quite shortly. And once he does, that's really going to counter the Sentinel. I mean, they do have a Magnetar hits pretty hard. But once Reverse Polarities, the stun is over. There's just no follow-up. BKB up on the Slaughter. It's going to be a huge team fight here. Ancient Apparition running into the middle of the entire enemy team. I have no idea what he was thinking. Why would he be the first one up the hill? This is, this is beyond me. But Reverse Polarity, Slaughter, Slither, and Crush. Two kills come out. Is the Sentinel actually going to make a comeback? Windrunner might drop as well. Will we see any sort of follow-up? Windrunner getting stunned for a long time. Four stabs herself away. Slaughter going to be blinking in. Slither and Crush comes out. Are there going to be any buybacks? Cast Knight arrives. This might be the time for the Sentinel to run away. Queen of Pain Ultimate doing a lot of damage there. Going to be one kill picked up for the Scourge. Two kills picked up by Yui. Doing a lot of work in that Chaos Knight. Somehow in the middle of all this chaos, the Chaos Knight's primary hero was detected. It's not going to matter. Slaughter, even Slaughter melting. Triple kill for Yui. Ultra kill for Yui. A lot of all chat shit talk coming out, but I guess Pacific Esports is entitled to it. Santino perhaps a little annoyed at how hard he was getting owned earlier. Uh, we do see a puck going down. That's going to be a team wipe, so well, it looked like a decent fight for the Sentinel. Uh, turned out not too well. One of the issues with running a very ultimate heavy lineup like this is if you're not able to kill off the enemy carry, which in this case is the Chaos Knight to a you know, lesser degree, the Queen of Pain kind of a semi carry. Without those ultimates, you really can't do too much, especially if you've lost the early game and you're not farming as well. Chaos Knight wasn't even there. He came, he showed up after everyone, had, after all the ultimates had been used, and a bunch of his allies were dead. That just didn't matter. Uh, you can see he's just gonna solo Roche in here uh, because of those built-in crits. He's not gonna have any trouble doing it. Doesn't even need life steal. Curious what his next item choice will be. I think a Manta style wouldn't be a bad choice, or maybe a Diffusal Blade. Uh, Mantis uh, just to give him more images and pushing power, but uh, again, Armlet's again, ar again, 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 again. No, Armlet is a great choice on image-based strength heroes, which I guess Chaos Knight's the only one, so mainly just on Chaos Knight. Um, because the images benefit a lot. So I wouldn't mind seeing an Armlet here either. My voice sounds weird at times because I'm frantically chugging water to try and lubricate my throat. Uh, it's this game, all these games are just so much action. I wouldn't mind casting a Chinese game just to be able to chill and <laughs> talk a little bit less, but hey, I enjoy the action too, so I'm not going to complain too much. San just picked up, oh, he might be going for Heaven's Albert, or maybe just an SNY, or Sanji Asha. Which one would be a bad choice? Uh, I mean, yeah, if you can get the Heaven's Halberd off on the Magnetar or the Slardar in the team fight, it's pretty huge because they don't really have any damage. They don't really have any damage outside of the Magnetar. He picks up a Crystal, it's going to be going for a Bariza. So very glass cannon based build. Which I have to say is not, it doesn't seem to be working out too well. Uh, it probably doesn't help that your Ancient Apparition is buying things like Hand of Midas, but hey, you know, they're, they're in this one together, so it must have been a team decision. One of the nice things about Magnetar, you know, especially if he goes for Battle Fury, is he doesn't really care too much about getting racks, as he does clear waves ridiculously quickly. Looks like the Scourge are going to force the Sentinel hand here. Sentinel could probably get a Tier 1, or excuse me, a Tier 2, and then back off. Uh, Queen of Pain drops the ultimate defensively, but it does a lot of damage. You can see Magnetar only on 1800 health, really not able to tank the tower. You compare that to the Chaos Knight, seeing on 3800. 
God, he's so tanked. And they're going to have to TP back now. They're about to lose second set of racks. TP's going to be coming in. Uh, Urshay has to use the blink defensively, which means that he's not going to do anything for another 20 seconds. Or what is the cooldown? Oh, sorry, 14 seconds. Shame on me for not knowing that cooldown. The TP's continue, but the damage has partially been done. I actually think that Chaos Knight going to drop the Phantasm there. But the Roar goes on to Urshager. Urshager are going to be very dead here. This is the deadest Urshager I've ever seen. Urshager is dead. Nice reverse polarity. Chaos Knight eating so much stun. Doesn't matter, though. Still on half of his health. So much damage coming out. And the Chaos Knight just way too powerful at this point. Four seconds stun. And the Shackle shot. Oh, this is going to be a quad kill. Uh, ultra kill coming out. Ultra kill coming out. No ultra kill coming out. Just kidding. Uh, maybe an ultra kill. If this puck ever dies, it'll be an ultra kill. Ultra kill, ultra kill, ultra kill. Get him. Come on. No! <laughs> kill him already! Oh, man. Big jukes. He even juked me, but he did make it back from the fountain. He finally went down, but it was to win, runner. So in the end, no ultra kill. Chaos Knight completes the Sanjin Yasha, I believe, at the end of the base. Uh, so now he moves even faster, because clearly he was too slow already. Puck doing all, everything he can to try and survive here. Chaos Knight just tanking the fountain really does not care. He is going to feed in the fountain, but in the end, I think that was definitely worth it. You go out with style, basically. So, it looks like this game should be over. The melee rack's about to go down here. Queen of Pain picks it up. Queen of Pain going on the offensive onto the Earthshaker, who's just kind of AFK in his face, perhaps sensing the inevitable defeat. Queen of Pain going to be doing a little fountain diving here. Does she have the ultimate? She drops the Ghost Scepter, drops the ultimate. Earthshaker going to live, though, which is not quite enough damage. <laughs> Urshaker gets denied even, I'm pretty sure he was very, uh, he was very much going to live there. So kind of a troll for Magnus. Uh, and I want to say, I'm going to put this on 2 times speed, because there's no way this game is not over. So you see Chaos Knight farming up on the top lane, sitting on 4,000 health. That is a lot of health. <laughs> Maybe you should just get another heart. Uh, because what's better than 4,000 health? Well, 5,000 health sounds pretty good. Although, honestly, I still think Heaven's Halberd would have been amazing. Uh, because getting Evasion on top of all of this tank is just insane. Slaughter are going to be dead, and Chaos Knight's actually going to ignore him. One Reality Rift, just going to clean up that Ancient Apparition instantly. Apparently Hannah Midas doesn't do a whole lot for your survivability. Santino pump faking on the Sonic Wave. Puck going to silence a blink out. And a little bit of fountain camping, perhaps, incoming. A reality rift. Earthshaker gets stunned. Chaos Ball, four seconds. Goodbye, Earthshaker. I gotta see this final score on the Chaos Knight. 92 and 23. Oh my god, he has been active. Uh, and he's been involved in almost every kill this game. Sonic Wave going out on the Puck. Puck gonna go down. Will, will he we get it as well? Now, Santino trying to fix his record. Uh, he's still feeding at that 9 and 10 score. But apparently you can still feed and get carried, so... Props to Santino's team. As the rest of the base will fall, and we should see the throne die momentarily. So let me see here, look, quick little math. 24 plus 19 is 34 plus 9, that's 43 kills. Has he been involved in every kill? Every kill but 6 out of 49, so 43 out of 49 kills. Chaos Knight has participated in. Damn, that's a lot of kills. I'm going to pause it right here so you can see that final scoreboard. Alright, so analysis of this game. Well, overall, I don't think Izone got outpicked. I think they got outplayed. Uh, the Puck made a big mistake leaving the lane when he did. Because he didn't get level 2, which meant he didn't have phase shift to help him survive when they towered over him. It led to his death a couple times. Uh, they, I think they should have pushed bottom harder. Um, maybe dewarded the camp. I didn't actually see if it was warded over here. If it wasn't, war if they did deward it, they should have just been single pulling to push the lane, so they got an early tier one tower. If it was dewarded, or if it wasn't dewarded, then they should have dewarded it. So, uh, in terms of the early game, that, those would be the two main things. They did a good job of killing off Santino. Uh, in the mid game, I don't like the Magnetar's item selections. He was too glass cannony. Uh, their lineup. The only thing I'll say about their lineup is they were very blink. They, they all needed blink daggers, and perhaps there's just one hero too many uh, in terms of needing a blink. 
because when you have to spend all that money on a blink dagger, that's money you're not spending on another item. And do you really need four initiators? It seems overkill to me. Uh, Earthshaker took so long to get his, which is to be expected because he's a support Earthshaker. Uh, there's a lot of bursty heroes on the Scourge. They have very good chasing power, so it's hard for him to survive. I think Scourge may, you know, they really took advantage of their mobility as a lineup. They're very aggressive, diving towers, chasing heroes. And of course, Chaos Knight just got fed. I mean, you can't feed a Chaos Knight that much when you don't have a harder carry on your team getting fed and expect to win. So I guess that would be my overall analysis. I think it was a little weird to pick into a Magnetar when the enemy had already picked up a Silencer and you're already very ultimate reliant. So I guess the draft wasn't ideal. I mean, I loved the Magnetar pick just because I want to see new heroes in the metagame. But I'm not sure this was the right game for him. He did pretty well mid against Beastmaster, though, I have to say. So that's going to be it for me. That's all the post-game analysis I can offer you guys. Again, I'm LD. If you enjoyed the commentary, please subscribe. If you didn't like it, let me know why. If you liked it, let me know why. I always love to hear flowery compliments. Uh, I do Dota 1 commentaries. I also do Dota 2 educational content. And of course, Dota 2 commentaries when I can, which right now is not very often. Although I'm waiting to do one. Uh, I'm waiting to get a co-commentator for it. If you're interested in co-commentating and have any experience, let me know. Otherwise, I have a friend in mind, but he's been busy with school. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed the commentary and look forward to bringing you more Southeast Asian Dota 1 action very soon. GG, guys.